Well, today's morning driver bank earnings. Let's start with Goldman Sachs releasing third quarter of results before the bell this morning. That stock up just above the flat line here in pre-market trading. Now the investment banking giant reported a fall in its third quarter profits. Goldman seeing profits decline 33% from a year ago to a little over $2 billion. Net revenues were essentially unchanged at $11.8 billion. Now in the company's earnings release, CEO David Solomon saying that, quote, we continue to make significant progress executing on our strategic priorities and we're confident that the work we're doing now provides us a much stronger platform for 2024. So a bit of an upbeat tone here from David Solomon. We know that he has uh, taken a lot of criticism over the last several quarters just yeah. in terms of where his own personal priorities lie, whether or not he's spending enough time at the bank and also just more broadly the direction of Goldman Sachs going forward. We mentioned the fact that profits are down significantly on that year over year basis. A lot of that because of the strategic shift that we've seen from Goldman Sachs pulling back on the consumer side of their business. Now, just within this last quarter here, Green Sky, part mm -hmm. of that drop that we saw in profit was because of the $506 million write down of Green Sky, which was that specialty lender that it did agree to sell as part of the bank's uh, shift here, shifting away from the consumer side of the business, but also $358 million in impairments on real estate investments. So also showing the exposure that Goldman has there and that, of course, offsetting some of the positives that we saw in this report, like the trading revenue and like the banking market's net revenue of $8 billion. Look, you mentioned that DJ D. Saul might be able to kind of double as the Goldman Sachs CEO, David Solomon, and vice versa. And I mean, look, that was one of the things that really excited me over the years. You know, now aside from that, because that in itself, I think, signaled that maybe this would be a bank that would have more of a work-life balance. But away from that, even thinking about these results and the time period that they're being resulted or reported in, as you mentioned, with that backdrop of a lot of scrutiny or at least external uh, scrutiny or reports of what was taking place internally at the bank, I think one thing that I continue to kind of come back to with many of these banks that have reported is where is their asset and wealth management business? How is that performing? You saw a decline versus the same quarter last year, about 20%. What does that signal? That signals that some of the wealthiest clients they have, and Goldman Sachs certainly has a line, direct line of communication and investment in with many of those customers and constituents here. For that to be down 20% year over year, I think that signals that there is continued either skittishness and sentiment or just not wanting to do a ton of either reallocation or putting more flows back into this market right now here. So uh, really a question of where and what would be the catalyst to initiate uh, a full flow of some of those funds back into that wealth management and asset side of the business too here.